Christina, tell us about obsidian. This is a piece of obsidian. Well, obsidian is used um, going back into the lower Paleolithic for uh, tool making. And it's good because there are no bubbles in it, uh, unlike pumice, which has bubbles. So uh, if you have a good piece of obsidian in it, you have a good source in a quarry for getting more, uh, or trading with other people to get it, uh, then you can make wonderful uh, stone tools. And our ancestors did that. And then local Indians did that here in uh, Mono. Tell us how obsidian is formed, actually. Oh, it's formed from volcanic uh, activity. And it is really like molten glass, which then cools and uh, without bubbles in it, hopefully. Uh, and then perform forms a glassine substance, which is um, easily flaked because it has a physical property with the cone of percussion of uh, dropping off uh, predictable size flakes and that's why it's possible to make a stone tool in a very uh, particular form and shape uh, that you're trying to do. So uh, with that model in your mind, uh, doing the process is something you learn as a skill. Uh, it's called flint napping takes years to develop that skill. Archaeologists will do it uh, in order to experience the physical properties of stone and what our ancestors were capable of. And in examining stone tools, you can tell if a person is right-handed or left-handed in how they made the tool, and you can see its manufacture, uh, the process uh, from beginning to end, if you really have done the flint, flint napping uh, learning process yourself.